I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand and pay my respects to their elders both past and present. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge our uh, special guests, our distinguished guests, uh, Uncle Colin Hunter, uh, Wurundjeri uh, Tribe Land Council member. Uh, my name's John Haynes. For those who don't know me, the Ex Executive Director of uh, Volunteers and Strategy. I'd like now to uh, introduce uh, uh, to everyone our uh, CEO, uh, Paul Smith, who will be uh, um, saying some words on CFO's behalf. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, John. Uh, I'd firstly like to also acknowledge that we meet today on Wurundjeri country and I pay my res respects to elders past and present. Uh, Uncle Colin Hunter, thank you for coming today. I'd like to acknowledge you and pay my respects to you and your, your people. Um, Steve and John, thanks for coming along today and everyone here. So CFA headquarters stands on Wurundjeri country and we should never forget that fact. It's a really important thing for us when we come to work just to acknowledge the space in which we come and meet as uh, CFA people. Today we, uh, we gather to take part in a smoking ceremony. Uh, this is a traditional ceremony. It's the first time we've had it for our people, our CFA people here in, in headquarters uh, territory. So I just want to make sure this today everyone sort of gets to grips with this being the first time we've done this and it's a really special occasion. Um, let's see it not only as a way of reflecting on the past but also thinking about how exciting our future together can be. Um, it's a more inclusive future, it's one that's more accountable um, and one that sees CFA people taking responsibility for themselves and their organisation as we move forward. We need to make sure we always respect uh, the people who we work with and we always respect the organisation that we work for um, and that's CFA and the values that CFA has. Um, we're stronger as a group when we get together at ceremonies like this. Um, I'd very much like you to, to reflect on the significance of this ceremony because it really does represent a lot to the traditional custodians. This is uh, my opportunity to welcome here uh, Uncle Colin Hunter, who's got a long, uh, a, a steep tradition of passing on his his understanding and and, uh, and and as does his family. So I've got a bio here for you, Uncle Colin. And Uncle Colin is a proud Wurundjeri man. So I don't know if you've read this, but I'll, you might learn a bit about yourself here. We'll see for how up to date this is. Tr uh, whose traditional lands, and listen to this, extended from inner city Melbourne south to the Mordialli Creek, west to the Werribee ri River, and east to Mount Borbore. It's a fair bit of dirt you looked up. Is that, is that, that, absolutely. So um, that's, a, that's a fair bit of traditional land. So Uncle Colin Hunter is the first traditional owner in Victoria to be employed, quote, on country, unquote, in local government, and has worked at the Yarra City Council, Council managing the Aboriginal Partnership Policy for the past seven years. Nine years. I knew this would be out of date. Uncle Colin is a Wurundjeri elder, people. We are in the presence of a, of a Wurundjeri elder and has been so, and I'm tipping these numbers are wrong too, and has been so for almost nine years? Since I was 45, just like 10. 10 years. Uh, he has sat on the Wurundjeri Council's Committee of Management about the same length of time and Uncle Colin is also a, a, an emerging artist with a couple of commissioned work by his name. So that would be, uh, I would love to see that. Let's talk a little bit about today. So what a privilege it is here and how lucky we are um, to have Uncle Colin and to be part of this ceremony. And it's often said that we can't understand our present without understanding our past. So let's just consider for a second, Aboriginal culture, as, as the CEO said, is the oldest living culture in the world. And the people have just, have used fire for thousands of years and it wasn't, an enemy or something to be afraid of, it was a tool that played a special role in daily and cultural life. It was used to shape the landscape and to hunt in a, practical no, in, a, in a practice known as fire stick farming. And CFA has started a journey to learn from Aboriginal people about using fire to prevent bushfires. Today is an opportunity for us to learn about and engage in local Wurundjeri culture and also encourage you to touch base with our Aboriginal members and to get to know them uh, more. This is how we can help build an inclusive and diverse fire. Yeah, thank you. 
Look, I want to start off by acknowledging that this afternoon we are meeting on the lands of my ancestors, the Wurundjeri people, and I want to take this opportunity to pay my respects to my elders, both past, present and future, elders from all nations, but I want to pay my respects to everyone gathered here especially. But I always like to acknowledge if there are any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people joining us, I'd like to acknowledge them. Woman Jekka, welcome. Wurundjeri Balik, Yemen Kondi Bit. The Wurundjeri people welcome everyone to land today. Wurundjeri, no, 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 Budumbo War, Kondi Nengnak, Dubon and Bit Bullock Boar, Tilikan. The Wurundjeri people want to look after and protect the land as they did long before. Wurundjeri country extends from the inner city of Melbourne. It goes across the mountains of the Great Dividing Range, west to the Werribee River, south to the Modiala Creek and east to Mount Borbore. And the Wurundjeri people are part of the Kulin Nation, another Warong language group. Hello, my name is Colin Hunter Jr. or Woolert, meaning possum. A name given to me by my grandmother as a young boy. I'm a proud and passionate seven generation Wurundjeri man and a direct descendant of Bibbidgin, who is Nalangeta, or head of the tribe at time at first settlement. And it's through my grandmother, Gumbriar, meaning white dove, or any tiny or nana she was known to us, mob, that I've got Aboriginal culture and heritage in my life today, so for that I say thanks, Nan. My grandmother was one of the last of the Aboriginal people born in the early 1920s, up at Corandert Mission in Hillsville before she got pushed up to Barham on the river in New South Wales. In Aboriginal culture, a great deal of respect is given to the land, the plants and the animals alike. And I've always got my beautiful gum leaves down here. I'll get Deb to take them inside somewhere and put them somewhere or we'll leave them here somewhere. And if you get an opportunity as you're moving around this afternoon, take a nice one and put it in your pocket for the afternoon, please. The significance as will keep you safe along country and give you the access to the resources while you're on country. And while you're on Wurundjeri country, you're welcome to the traditional lands and the waterways of the Wurundjeri people. So woman Jack are welcome. Look, as black fellas moved around country, as a Wurundjeri man, I didn't go down to Geelong to Waffer on country or to, to Bendigo to Jarjar on country or even Dallas Springs to Arundel country and just go on country and access the resources. The only way we could keep it sustainable was have our really clearly defined boundaries, clean boundaries. And part of that welcoming ceremony would be the cleansing of the smoke to ensure that when you come on country, you didn't bring bad spirit with you and you'd be cleansed when you left country too. Just want to encourage people, always say, get on that thing they call the internet, you know, that tool, and punch in that word Warrandry or punch in that word Corandirk and see what comes up. Because there's two remarkable stories. The, right, the first one of that self-determination at Hillsville, that Corin Dirk. And I said my grandmother was born in there in 21. She was actually the last female baby born on Corin Dirk in 21. So that was quite special. So that's a remarkable story. You know, within a generation, they had you know award-winning hops that they were taken down to the Melbourne show and winning, winning, winning awards, but never receiving their prize money for it. You know, it's quite strange. And it's just a story of self-determination. It was probably one of the the most successful missions in the in the in the country at the time, you know, because we led the way in Victoria down here. And then also you've got that story of Melbourne and how that was colonised, you know, it was probably one of the fastest colonised cities in the world, especially when they found the gold. You know, but from 1835 when Mr Batman signed that treaty down on the Merry Creek with the elders, to 1865, well under 100 Wurundjeri people left and hardly any Bunurong people. But before I do that, I just want to add to what you said there about the, the fire, you know, and we wouldn't have survived without it, you know. We used it for a lot of things, you know. Um, as you said, we've just started that fire burning practice. And when they first got here, you know, and we didn't have these big bush fires, you know, gum trees are meant to burn as we know, but we didn't have these, we didn't have the fuel on the ground. We made sure of that. And they also used it for, for hunting in different areas. They might start a fire and, and, and flush the animal out. They'd use it for cooking. They'd use it for lots of things.